I am your 
we are you, Jesus. We are yours, Jesus. We belong to you, Jesus. We belong to you, Lord. We declare this morning, Lord, and as we come to a wrap up of this sermon series, that we belong to you. You speak to our lives, you speak to your children, you minister grace upon us, Lord. I pray for them that are waiting on you. I pray for them that are going through diverse challenges and trials and temptations in their lives. It is in your word that there is no temptation that comes to us that is not common, but even with temptation you provide a way. I pray that you may open up a door for your people. I pray for healing for them that are ailing and sick in the name of Jesus Christ. And so Lord, we bless you in Jesus' name. Pray. Amen, amen. It's always a, a great joy uh, and a humbling duty uh, just to come to you and to bring God's word to you. Welcome to International Christian Center here in Meru. And today being the last Sunday of this month, uh, you know, if you've been following uh, the teachings, we've been on a sermon series, Let It Go, just speaking about the emotions, where our emotions may be a heart, yeah, the faults uh, that are, are committed against us. And it's my joy and humble duty just to bring God's word to you. Uh, so the first Sunday, a quick recap, we spoke about the little offenses that if allowed can become grow into bitterness and uh, the second Sunday we spoke about the significant betrayals maybe something really big was 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 done to you and it's been really hard for you to be over it how do you forgive the big offenses and kind of last Sunday we spoke about uh, 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 forgiving God yeah forgiving God yeah being in a position whereby uh, we said that uh, uh, technically God does not sin, therefore technically there is nothing to forgive God for. But again, at times we expected God to do something, we've been waiting on God on something and he, he delays something that we know very well, he can do it for you and he has with, withheld it from you. How do you walk through such a season even as you wait and expect on God? Today we are taking it a little uh, deeper. Let me tell you something. There is one person that is really the most difficult person for you to forgive is yourself. Sometimes we have a lot of difficulty forgiving ourselves. You think about it. Yeah. Think about maybe when you did something that you know you shouldn't have done it. Yeah, you feel like you let God down, you let yourself down, you let a loved one down. Yeah, you say it's something that you ought not to have said. And you really feel deeply ashamed when you come back to your senses and you're like, what did I do? How on earth? Yeah, yeah maybe you found yourself in a situation. Yeah, uh, you went. Uh, can I say drinking, for instance, yeah? Something that you know I shouldn't have done. And you did something out of influence of, of drinking. And today you, you really regret what you did. It's so shameful anytime you, you try to think about it. Yeah, you did something that you cannot undo. It's very easy to go to the computer and click undo. But you know very well, I did something that I can't undo. Yeah. Maybe in the name of loving your family, you sold yourself all out to work and worked and worked. And lo and behold, you realize that you didn't have time for your family, time for your children. And the children that you are working for, you completely disconnected with them. You completely disconnected with your spouse. And you're like, I thought I was working for my family. And now it really haunts you. It's really big. Yeah. You did something that you wish you did not do. And it haunts you big time. And the guilt can't just go 
away. And that way today our sermon topic is why can't I forgive myself? Uh, it's very important and uh, uh, keen, uh, a key for me to mention that not all guilt is created equal. Not all guilt is the same. So I just want to quickly speak about two types of guilt. The first guilt, I am calling it the false guilt. This is a guilt that you carry for something that wasn't your fault. It is not your doing that caused the mess, but yet you find yourself in a situation whereby you are carrying a guilt. For instance, your, your parents divorced and you feel like you should have done something to salvage their marriage and it's been haunting you. But you know very well it wasn't your fault, yet you're guilty about it. That's a false guilt. Maybe it's a friend who was in your life. Maybe they committed suicide and you feel like I should have done something about it. And it really haunts you. Or maybe you abused someone uh, that you had trust uh, with and they had power over your life. And somehow, somehow they, they abused you. They misused you. They took you for granted. And because of the issue, you feel like you, you played a role. Yeah? Or maybe they turned it and made you feel like you are the cause of it. And you've been carrying this false guilt. I want to say that false guilt is always really destructive. And it is dangerous because it really negatively works on your emotions. But again, I want to speak about this guilt that can be a gift to you. The Bible says this, our first scripture that we are reading right away, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, uh, verse 10. And Paul is writing and is speaking these words, NIV version, he says, Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret but worldly sorrow brings death godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret think about it but worldly sorrow brings death. You see, me feeling guilty over something that I did can be a gift from God to me. It can be a gift. Because what godly sorrow does it doesn't turn me from God. It shows me the wrong that I did. But displays God's grace and mercy. Such as I repent. And you know to repent is to re. To re is to make a turn. Pent. And pent is simply moving from a low ground to a higher ground. So what godly sorrow does, it causes me to repent and thereby brings salvation and it leaves no sorrow. But the Bible says that worldly sorrow brings death. So the feeling of conviction, I did wrong can be really helpful because it takes us off the wrong path the path that destroys the path that hurts the path that fills you with shame and brokenness the path that separates you and isolates you 
from the fellowship and it takes you to the right path the right path of I did wrong but I am not what I did listen to me my friend you are not what you did the definition of you is not the wrong that you did that's what the enemy would want that's what the bible says that worldly sorrow brings death because worldly sorrow separates you let me give you a good example from the scriptures there's a guy called peter and there's a guy called judas and then i'll wrap it up there so peter and judas more or less did the same thing peter the bible says this about peter in the book of um just a quickly look chapter 22 verse 59 verse 261 let me just read it about an hour later another asserted that's a lady came to peter suddenly this fellow was with him for he's a galilean peter replied man i don't know what you're talking about just as he was speaking the roster crawled jogo akawika sitini na moja inasema hivi the lord turned i think you've never seen this i want you to see this so jesus had told peter before the roster crawls you will have denied me three times so immediately he did that and the roster crawl the bible says this underline these words the lord turned and looked straight to peter then peter remembered the word that the lord spoke to him before the roster crawls today you will disown me three times what did peter do the bible says this verse 62 and he went outside and wept bitterly i'm speaking about godly sorrow i can't believe i let god down i can't believe i let myself down you see peter was this guy that was standing this tall peter is this guy that said you are the christ the son of the living god and he was told on that confession i'll build my church and the gates of the heads shall not prevail against it but look at peter at the hour that his lord needed him so much he betrays at the very hour you see you never want to let down a dying man because <laughs> if the man dies you don't have a chance to go to him and say sorry but peter at the hour he lets jesus down did what what did i say why did i say that to my brother that's what peter did the bible says this that he wept bitterly akalia kwa uchungu after he did that there's a man called judas what did he do he sold jesus yeah he betrayed jesus and he sold him and at some point he came back to himself but he was so shameful he had the worldly sorrow that separated him you see godly sorrow takes you back to god worldly sorrow takes you away from god listen to me shame when you're so shameful about what you did Shame is the devil's play ground. My friend, the hardest person for you to forgive could be you. You know what you did maybe in the past? Maybe you broke your marriage vows and cheated on your spouse. 
and you won't let it go. That ground can be the devil's ground. The guilt says I did something bad. But shame says I am bad. That is the difference. The devil uses shame to connect your actions to your identity. He wants you to feel and believe that you're pathetic, you're worthless, you're hopeless and you have no future. That what you did is unforgivable. It cannot be mentioned. You have no place before God. That's what the devil did to Judas. And he ended up hanging himself. Did you know that Judas had a chance to come to the cross and say, Lord Jesus, I know I betrayed you. I am sorry. Listen to me. If Jesus can forgive a thief at his last hour, why don't you think that Jesus would have forgiven Judas if his sorrow, if his guilt brought him to Jesus? But the devil showed him, you're pathetic, you're worthless. Listen to me, my friends. The enemy will always connect your actions to your identity. But you are not what you did. You are not. That's not your identity. The devil will always say, God will not bless you because of what you did. You will never be happy. You will never have a good marriage. You will never make a difference. Nasikuzote, listen to this. The enemy will tell you, your punishment, your punishment is the pain that you're going through right now. He'll always tell you, your pain is your punishment for your past. See, the devil wanted to convince Peter you blew it. Jesus trusted you so much. But just look. What did you do? You betrayed him. Yeah. That's the message. The devil. He said to him, Jesus saw it. Do you remember? He looked at you intently. That look you remember, Peter? All the disciples know that Peter betrayed Jesus. You denied him rather and said you don't know him. Your life is over, Peter. See, the devil wants to use your shame, just as I said earlier, to drive you away from God. But God wants to use your guilt to draw you even closer to himself. So we, we are left with a choice to make. You can choose to make your wrongdoing become a shame and therefore a playground for the enemy. But you can choose to make your guilt a gift that will cause you to see your wrong and draw you closer to God. You see, guilt is all about acknowledging your sins. What you did was wrong. But it should lead you to saying, you know, Lord, I am sorry that I did it. You guys know what? David, the man after God's own heart. Pastor Peter, a friend of mine, always says the man that he wouldn't wish for a neighbor. Because, you know, he took his wife's baby away. So you didn't wish him. I think I didn't wish David for a neighbor as well. So the man after God's own heart. You know what he did with Bathsheba? But chapter 51 of Psalm is a recorded prayer of restoration for David. See, when Jesus arose from the dead, when he met, De when he met Peter, rather, he didn't come and tell him, you know, Peter, I knew you'd betray me. I knew what you did. 
He didn't tell him wallow in your sins. But he asked him Peter, do you love me? And he was like, yes Lord, I love you. And Jesus chose a Peter that betrayed that denied him. And he told him, feed my sheep. Do my will. Show my love, the same love. And Peter on this other end, he didn't say, no, I can't receive your grace. He didn't say, I am not good enough for your grace. He acknowledged his sin. He repented and he received his forgiveness. I am calling on you today. What is that thing that haunts you every day? Then acknowledge your sin. Take a step. Of repenting and receiving. Repent si kutu si ile ati. Repent actually ni kutan around. If I was headed to this direction, I turn and take the right path. Let that guilt go. Let it go. Receive God's grace. Bible says John chapter first John chapter one verse nine. If we confess our sins, He. God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let go the lust. Let go the lies. Let go the deceit. Let go the cheating. Let go the neglect. Let go the bad decisions. Let go those words that you spoke that you regret let them go roll them over roll just roll away the reproach at his cross and receive his forgiveness friends you cannot change your past but God can change your future if you allow him you betrayed your spouse you can be faithful now you have wasted years with addiction. Take a step today. You cannot change what you did yesterday. But you can take the right decision right now. And live free. Help others live free. You can let down. Yeah, You let God down. You let others down. You let yourself down. Let it go. Next time the devil brings about your past and reminds yourself of your future, of, of, of your past rather, I want you to remember that he is intimidated with your future. The devil brings up your past because he is intimidated by your future. By what you can become. Peter, the guy who fell, became the first preacher, the first leader of the church. Let it go. The Bible says, Philippians, even as I wrap up, being confident of this, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, that he who began the good work in your life will carry it to completion until the day of our coming of our Lord Jesus. See, the devil wants to, to use your past to steal your hope for a better future. Forgiveness will not change your past, but it frees you for a better future. When you forgive yourself, when you forgive me, you are not changing what you did. You're just freeing yourself to be a vessel that God can use for the future. Just want to pray for you right now that you can let it go and forgive yourself. We bless you, Jesus. Glory to you, Lord. Just join us in as we sing this song right now. Just forgive yourself in the name of Jesus. So Lord, we bless you and we honor you. You just join me right now in faith and let's pray together. 
Lord, we give you praise. We forgive. I forgive me. You say these words after me and pray, even with your heart right now, that I forgive me. I refuse to be taken away by the shame of the things that I did. And today, I receive the grace of God of forgiveness. I pray for grace over your life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that the Lord will cover you, that will bring healing, that you receive his forgiveness. You could be there right now and you want to say yes to the Lord Jesus. And you're saying, yes, I forgive me of my past wrongs, of my past deeds. I receive your grace. Just say, Lord Jesus, I forgive me and I receive your grace. Your grace that brings forgiveness. I accept you as Lord and Savior over my life. Wash me and cleanse me by your blood. In Jesus' name I pray. May the Lord just bless you and keep you even as you continue supporting us with your offerings. I pray for God's grace over your life this week that will indeed keep you and protect you. In Jesus' name, amen. Till next Sunday, amen and amen. Give you praise. Forgive me. 